member, Caribou North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, would the Minister of Natural Resource Operations please inform the House why the Chief Forester cannot tell the people of Burns Lake if log supply exists to justify rebuilding the Babeen Forest Products Mill? Minister of Jobs. See, I need to have it at a certain octave in order for it to get into my subconscious, so I tend to like to listen to it loud. Well, thank, thanks very much, Mr. Speaker. As the, the member opposite uh, well knows, given the context of the existing environment and the mountain pine beetle challenges and the timber supply uh, fall off that would occur if no action were taken, in fact, there may not be enough timber to supply that market. Uh, what we're doing right now is very carefully working through all of the options to see what the possibilities are of ensuring that there is enough timber supply for Hampton to rebuild that. And Mr. Speaker, I'm cautiously optimistic. So it is a process that will take a small amount of time, I think another uh, six or seven weeks, but we need to do that work and make sure that when Hampton does make their decision, they make it with all of the best possible information and hopefully put those people back to work. Don't ask me how I slept through that, but you know, many times, you know, it'd be that, at about that level, and Never I'd be supplemental. sleeping you, away, but try Mr. and take Speaker, the remote from me, you could supply couldn't. area, which feeds Burns Lake, has the most up-to-date timber supply review in the province. To reset the annual level cut last July, the most up-to-date. The Minister of Natural Resources has sitting on his desk the most up-to-date assessment of options in that area for expanding that cut. And yet, with the most up-to-date information available, this government can't answer the question of whether logs exist or not for rebuilding that mill. That is the situation the Auditor General is pointing out. It applies to every timber supply area in the province, and in particular, in the Mount Pine Beetle Zone. The issue of Burns Lake is the issue for Vanderhoof and Prince George and Quinnell and Williams Lake and all of those communities, and it needs an answer now. For the $800,000 that this government spent on its job strategy, we could have re-inventoried the forest, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Natural Resources, will he commit today to make sure that in next week's budget, the resources are there to re-inventory our forest and answer the question of when mills will close and how communities are going to have to adjust to the post-Mount Pine Beetle world? Yeah, because that pine beetle is just spreading like wildfire. They don't Minister. have a handle on it. Well, thanks very much, Mr. They Speaker. used to beat and up, the liberals used to beat up the NDP and say, oh, well, it's all your fault because when you had a chance, you didn't do nothing. But 11 years later, I don't see the liberal Mr. government Speaker, doing anything well, about it either. Uh, that the timber supply just in the Lakes District would not be adequate to support this mill. And I, I'm sure that the member office... And they know they have a problem. Know he's very knowledgeable you know, in this area. So, uh, the issue uh, is we need to look at the broader region, which the member opposite does point to. So in other words, we need to think about the entire region, starting in Smithers, going to Prince George, and down through the Caribou. So the completion, the completion of the member's question in terms of suggesting that we need to figure out a fix for the broader region, I think is quite accurate. However, I do hear the critic uh, opposite Mr. Speaker saying, suggesting that these logs are going to China. He knows that that is dead wrong. There are no logs coming out of this timber supply area or this region that go to China. In fact, the logs out of this province are typically coastal logs, which don't represent the type of quality that this mill needs. So I hope the, that the critic opposite uh, stands up and admits uh, that the timber supply that he's trying to pin on the hopes of people for, to Burns Lake has no reflection of this at all. Burnaby Deer Lake. Uh, Chilliwack has the longest trial delays among BC's provincial courts. On average, there's a 16-month delay to find the next available court date. On January 30th, <clears throat> after a 51-month delay, Judge Wendy Young stayed proceedings in Chilliwack Provincial Court for a drunk driving case. Worse, in this case, the accused was first convicted then still walk free because of the delay. Judge Young noted that, and I quote, there has been institutional or systemic delay of approximately 33 months, unquote. Almost three years of delay 
directly attributed by the judge to a system in crisis. At the very time, the day that yet another criminal walked free in British Columbia, this time in Chilliwack, the government had sat for almost six months on a scathing audit that said the justice system is in a mess caused by the BC Liberal government. To the Attorney General, when is she going to show some leadership and act decisively to fix this intolerable crisis in our justice system? Attorney General. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And as we have said and, continuously, you know, I don't know why we'll this lady has been minister of this, and minister of that, is unacceptable. And, you know, minister of we actually need to take a look minister at the of schools system. and just every year around, in British Columbia. You know, it doesn't make any sense to me. It's like passing the buck. Go through courts in this province. Nobody wants to take responsibility and for Mr. the Speaker decisions stays, that they implement along the way. One and, tenth you know, these people, they get off too easy percent. because they just go into another ministry acceptable? and become a leader of something no, else. No, it's not. And, you know, but have to fact, learn the ropes. And, and then, you know, it's just, there's no, of cases in no transparency, Columbia which leads to, to no conclusion. responsibility, and no accountability. Time that the you know, it's too easy to, had you know, a constructive dialogue pen, with us of a pen, about you know, how destroy we can deal with lives, systemic right? reform in a system badly in need of change. So now the court system needs to be changed. Well, they, they've already, you know, did cutbacks with the Landlords and Tenancy Act branch years ago. They already did cutbacks with the uh, legal aid system years ago. So I don't know what change they want to bring now. Speaker. Well, last year we had 109 states in this province, and we have internet predators going free. We have drunk drivers going free. That is not acceptable. It's not acceptable to the victims of these crimes. This government likes to point out the actions the government has taken or is going to take at some point in the future. Talks about things like the hiring of new, new judges, but it's Associate Chief Judge Gill pointed out, and I quote, the appointments have had virtually no net impact on the severe shortage of the complement, unquote. In other words, the new judges that the government boasts about are at best managing to avoid this crisis from getting even worse. This case took place in Chilliwack. In fact, Chilliwack Obviously, I can't do this all day long. Chilliwack, you know, I'm already, you know, clicked on and off like four times, five times already. I only got 59 minutes left on my camera without it being plugged in in terms of battery power. I've got lots of videos on here that need to be deleted. And, uh, you know, I'm going to do this a few times more, you know, maybe on a different day with a different debate. You know, I'm more into social development, not so much... You know, forestry that's being eaten General. up by a bunch of bugs. No more delays, like I said, no oftentimes more audits, I'd fall asleep, no but it would go when into my subconscious anyway. And, uh, you know, the numbers, always listening to the, you know, financial numbers of certain things just kind of made me immune to the, to the, you know, the political well, you, aspect of $160 million said, just being a drop in the bucket when you look at the great grand scheme of what a provincial government is supposed to represent for the collective. Recently, there was a case that took 88 days, Mr. Speaker, 88 days, 17 and a half weeks of a judge's time. What were they doing? Discussing the admissibility of wiretap before the case even started. 88 days. Is that acceptable to the member opposite? Because those are the kinds of things that happen in stays all across the province. Let me give another example. A recent case in northern British Columbia. 15 appearances. 15 appearances that dealt with document applications, trial preparation, you know, trial now that I'm thinking about it, when she was the Minister of Education, I think I may even, you know, wrote that department and, um, you know, to make an appointment with this woman, but I never did get it. Shirley Bond, right? I think that's her name. If I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure it's Shirley anyway. And, uh, you know, I got forwarded to some other department, 
Maybe, like I said, these guys were passing me around like some hot potato, you know. One would say, go here, I'd go there, I'd, you know, do whatever, and then they'd, oh, no, you know, you need to go over here, and, ah. Well, thank you, Honorable Speaker, and I'm glad the Attorney General has a profound grasp of the problems in the court system that this government's created in 11 years of administration. 11 years, my people. She finds no stay acceptable because the victims of the crimes in those stays are don't didn't find it very acceptable either. But six months, honorable speaker, six months they sat on a report that pointed out these issues. Judge after judge in this province has passed judgment on this government's handling of our legal and justice system and have come to the same conclusion. Not enough judges, not enough funding, Honorable Speaker. A government that has no plan, that is in the midst of another Matter review. Matter of fact, so I was just reading in our local newspaper speaker, that legal aid lawyers are on strike. So you know, I, I can probably take a quick clip of that, you know, and add it into one of these videos here. And uh, and they're just not representing poor, poor low-income people that are coming in with criminal charges, and oftentimes a lot of them is petty theft, you know, crime, drug addiction, that type of thing, right? Hold on.